Hey you guys, how's it going? It's been a while since I've seen you, since you've seen me, since we've seen things, but we're getting back on the bandwagon. Pretty excited for what's to come um, because the, my new job, I'm gonna have a lot of training and be getting getting some knowledge on how to use a lathe, um, a lot better welding stuff. Um, so basically, I got a job in, in the maintenance department for a power plant, and um, we basically have an entire machine shop at work. Um, lots of guys that know things about building parts, um, stuff like that so i'm hoping that that uh i'll be able to be a little bit more consistent with videos um from here on out uh with my schedule um they might not be as often but more consistent so um and also i'm hoping that that this is gonna step up the game in parts fabrication and stuff like that where I'm going to be able to bounce ideas off of guys that know more than I do and um, kind of broaden my horizons on being able to build precision pieces, um, bushings, bearings, rebuild stuff. I've got a, a motor, an old uh, late 20s motor and transmission that I'm wanting to completely go through to build like a little single seat single seater speedster project um, and I'm sure that there's going to be things in that that aren't available so I'm hoping that that I'm going to be able to gain a bunch of knowledge and be able to have more access to tools and things that I can use in order to build better stuff so super hopeful and grateful for this opportunity to better myself um, learn and grow more in fabrication and, and mechanical knowledge and everything like that and the opportunity that it provides for my family to have a steady schedule and uh, be able to be home all the time and stuff like that so we're pretty excited about it i've kind of taken a break um, from doing videos for a while just because with the job changes and stuff, finances have kind of been here and there. So we haven't had a lot of money to be putting into stuff here in the shop. But I'm hoping that's that's going to change as well. So, But what we have here is we have 54 Buick Gasser Project. And as you can see, maybe not as you can see, but as I will show you... It's up on jack stands. Um, this is really cool. I'll give you a sneak peek into this. So, ladder bars, everything, that's all done. Still got to figure out what we're doing for springs. But, check this out. So, <clears throat> I got on the phone, or on the interweb, the Facebook, the socials, whatever you want to call it. I got on there and was asking around about wheels because I couldn't find. I wanted to do. I wanted to do a 10-inch wheel, 15-inch diameter, but I'm running the eight lugger end, so I couldn't find anybody that made what I wanted with the backspacing that I measured that I needed. So what I did is I ordered. The plain blank hoops from Diamond Racing Wheels. And I called them and I said, hey, 15 inch wheels, 10 inch hoops, can I get them bare? They said, yeah, no problem. I said, okay, what is your inside diameter of the wheel? And they gave me two dimensions. I was able to find some eight lug wheel centers that fit the dimension of one of their 15 inch hoops. So. Took the, the centers, cut them out of the old wheels, the old 16-inch wheels, 
and um, took them to work, put them in the press, pressed them into the backspacing I need, chucked them up in the lathe, spun them around, trued them up with the dial gauge, and welded them in. So we have 10 inch wide, 15 inch diameter paint lug rear wheels for this beauty over here. The only problem with this whole thing is, because you're thinking, wow, that's pretty cool that he was able to do that. Well, it is pretty cool that I was able to do that. But my little brain here forgot that 60s Dodges have a bigger hub diameter. And I didn't double check the hub diameter. And so this wheel center here does not fit over the hub on my axle so I'm gonna have to take these back to work chuck them up in the lathe and trim this wheel center out so that it will clear over the hub of the axle not a big deal but just another little hurdle that we're gonna have to overcome but we're here for that so I was kind of kind of sad when I pulled my wheel out of the box and went to stick it on there and see what it looked like and it fitn't dit. Shucks. But anyways, if you guys are needing uh any custom wheel stuff, the guys at Diamond Racing Wheels. This is their their stuff here. Super friendly, super nice, got me what I needed, helped me out, answered questions. 10 out of 10, recommend those guys for any sort of custom wheels. They do build um, wheels to custom offsets, different bolt patterns, wheel diameters, everything. They have quite the selection, um, but they didn't offer the eight lug truck style center that I wanted because I kind of want to be able to put like a dog dish cap over the back. Maybe. We'll see what it looks like. But I wanted that option. If not, I think those wheels will look pretty cool how they are. Probably going to get them. I got a guy here in town that's just started a powder coating business. I'm hoping to get hooked up with him. Get the wheels and the ladder bars and some stuff like that powder coated. So... Stay tuned for that, but tonight what we're gonna do is we're gonna finish cleaning this up. We gotta unhook the steering box and kind of move it out of the way. Um, brake line stuff a little bit, but we're ready to chop the front of this frame off. So I'm kinda, kinda run you down what my idea is and uh, get to it. So the frame, the steel that we're going to be using for the frame rails I've had for a while. This is just a, a piece of it um, that I'm using to kind of see. But this section of the frame here comes straight from clear back up the frame it comes straight and ties in so what I want to do is cut it straight down plumb from right here where it bends and starts coming out so we're gonna cut it straight down there and then we're gonna leave this piece coming forward till it kind of ties in about the same width if we were to slide this piece inside that C channel, about right here, it looks like it'll tie in to this. So we'll be able to kind of slide a piece in, weld it, fish plate it on both sides, and be good to go. So what I've done, what I've done is I've taken the car, put it on jack stands and I leveled the bottom of the frame. OK, 
okay? So, just looking at it, I kind of feel like that's about the rake of the body that I want. I want it to be a little bit nose high, you know, gasser style, a little bit nose high. So I'm kind of wanting it to sit about where, kind of wanting to sit about where it is. I still can adjust the rear ride height once I get my um, cheater slicks and the wheels and everything mounted that I'm gonna do. So we can still adjust that height wise and then I'll just adjust the front end ride height with shackles or brackets or arching springs or whatever we gotta do to get it sitting where, where we wanna do it. So um, anyways, I think, I think the next step is to undo all this steering stuff. We'll undo this steering here at the pitman arm unbolt the drag link or the idler arm get that off the frame and start making and measuring some marks and making some cuts see if we can get this front suspension piece off of here and start working on getting the front frame rails um, fabbed in there so here we go i'm hoping that i can just put the steering gear back where it is um from where i've been looking at on the frame where i'm planning on cutting it and doing stuff i think i can leave it where it is with the brackets so we'll see got all the steering unhooked steering gear is unbolted from the brackets I've just got to get the steering column loosened up I guess hopefully slide it up into the firewall out of the way or be able to pull it out of the way somewhere where we can get in there and make a cut Steering column brackets here, here, there, there, and I'm going to cut it right, right here on the front side of that, and then we'll come across here a little bit in front of that bracket. And then probably jump right next to this seam and then across and down what do you think about that? So it'll basically be right here up along that seam over and down I'll draw it out alright so I kind of got it sketched out where I want to cut it. But first I'm going to just rough cut the front off so that I can get in there and measure and figure it better. So I'm just going to come a little bit ahead of where I want to cut it, snip this bad boy off, get it out of the way, then we're committed to make sweet gasser with a straight axle. So, here we go.
So some of you might think, oh, what a sad thing. Boo wah cry. But let me show you what we got here. This car has been wrecked before. This has all been straightened back up, fish plated. It's all crooked. The X frame underneath, the, the frame on this car has been hacked to pieces. I'm gonna have to weld pieces of frame back in just so that I feel like it's gonna be good enough. So, yeah, it's a pretty cool car, but we're gonna make it even cooler because that's just the plan. So, anyways, I know it's pretty drastic right now because now it's unmovable until I get something put on the front. So, we're gonna get this out of the way, get some pieces of metal, and start scrapping together some frame rails. Put a couple sections of double wall frame here where the C-channels overlap. We still got to trim out. Basically, it's kind of exactly what I was envisioning. Having that butt welded in there like so. We'll kick, kick these frames coming out level. And then fish plate this. Trim this kind of down trim this kind of down to match the top fish plate this side fish plate all that have us some straight frame rails so i think it'll work out we'll get that cleaned up and see what it looks like Got this all cut out, trimmed up. Cut a section of metal for our frame rail. It's left it a little bit long. Um, since we're not gonna be running a front bumper, we're gonna put a piece of round pipe in here and round the edges off um, to kind of give it a front end. Um, I've got to put uh extension ends on the welding lead so tomorrow i got to go to the hardware store and get some um ends to build an extension cord for my welder so that it can reach over here um so i won't be able to tack this in but basically what i'm wanting to do 
is get this side tacked in kind of where it's going to be and then build this driver's side to match um should be pretty good i think it's going to fall like i was saying right in line with that frame rail that runs up underneath the car so should go in pretty slick and then once once we get the frame rails in we'll square them up cut them to match just in case there's any difference in the the welds and then we can go from there as far as axles and tires and leaf springs and all that stuff so anyways probably gonna call it a night for tonight we'll pick back up on this tomorrow and get some more done on it all right so we got a frame rail all prepped up ready to start tacking it up i'm gonna get it <clears throat> i'm gonna get it tacked up here and level and then we'll set up the laser shoot center line square it up with the center of the chassis and get it all tacked where it needs to go so let's get to it We got it tacked on there. It's sturdy, it's level, it's not gonna go anywhere. Um, I'm not gonna finish, finish weld it out until I get the other side tacked in there and I'm happy with how they're sitting. So, what I did is I dropped, um, measured some identical points on the frame, dropped a plumb bob down from the outside of the frame and then scribed marks on my floor for center line of the chassis it lines up perfectly with in between the the body mounts on the cowl the center of the firewall the center of the x frame like it is center of the car but for whatever reason could be that this car was wrecked in the past and the frame is fish plated together. Could be that the frame rail stamped differently for the steering gear and that stuff. But the driver's side is about half inch um, farther away from center line than the passenger side. So what I'm planning on doing is just coming off parallel with this inner frame rail just like i'm doing here come off parallel with that along center line and parallel from here along center line the frame rails will not be equal distance from center line one will be offset a half inch to the front but what i will do is Find center line and locate my leaf spring brackets and axle and everything off of center line of chassis. So the the frame, the front part of the frame itself is going to be, but you'll never notice because it'll all be centered. It's just offset center on the driver's side. So, anyways, that's the plan. I've got to um, when I have a little bit more time, I'll come out and finish cutting this similar to this get my other piece of frame rail here that i have welded tacked onto there so another thing i did when i was setting this up on jack stands i stuck a level on the frame and leveled the frame of the car um, it has a little bit to me right now it looks like it's either sitting level or a little bit nose high with the frame leveled, which is okay with me. 
I know the back end for sure is going to come down. Um, we have yet to see what the spring and axle setup with tires and everything is going to do here on the front, but I would assume that once we get the engine and everything in, the front end is going to settle down too. So the car's not going to be this tall, this high, but it is, I mean, we are definitely going for the nose high gasser look with this car. So anyways, um, I just had a few minutes, so I wanted to pop out here in the shop, get that tacked on so I could see it, keep my ambition going. And um, here either tomorrow night or the next night, we'll come out and spend some spend some decent time on it and see if we can't get a front frame um, fab together and start putting axle and suspension and everything together and maybe get it underneath the front of this car that would be cool to have this thing back rolling again so anyways we'll catch you next time